Good day everyone, my name is Jessamina Plot and welcome to our podcast this morning. So today, we will be discussing about the six philosophies of education. The first one is the philosophy that John Lucky has introduced. It is the empiricist educator. This philosophy talks about acquiring the knowledge about the world through the senses, learning by doing and by interacting with the environment. Simple ideas became more complex through comparison, reflection, and generalization. And that is what we call the inductive method. It also questioned the long traditional view that knowledge came exclusively from literacy sources, particularly the Greek and Latin classics. It also opposed the divine right of kings theory, which held that the monarch had the right to be an unquestioned and absolute ruler over his subjects. The political order should also be based upon a contract between the people and the government. And it also discusses that aristocrats are not destined by birth to be rulers. People were to establish their own government and select their own political leaders from among themselves. Civic education is necessary. And the last one is people should be educated to govern themselves intelligently and responsibly. So for John Lucky, education is not the acquisition of knowledge contained in the great books. It is learners interacting with concrete experience, comparing and reflecting on the same concrete experiences. The learner is an active, not a passive agent of his or her own learnings. The second one is the philosophy of Herbert Spencer, which is the utilitarian education. Spencer's concept of survival of the fittest means that the development had gone through an evolutionary series of stages from the simple to the complex and from the uniform to the more specialized kind of activity. Social development had taken place according to an evolutionary process by which simple homogeneous societies had evolved to more complex societal systems characterized with humanistic and classical education. It also industrialized society to require vocational and professional education based on scientific and practical objectives rather than on the very general educational goals associated with humanistic and classical education. The curriculum should emphasize the practical, utilitarian, and specific subjects that helped humankind master the environment. This philosophy was not inclined to rote learning. Schools must be related to life and to the activities needed to earn a living. Curriculum must be arranged according to the contribution to human survival and progress. The sciences and other subjects that sustain human life and prosperity should have curricular priority since it aids in the performance of life activities. Individual competition leads to social progress. He who is fittest survives. Our third philosophy of education is the philosophy that John Dewey has introduced. It is the learning through experiences. Education is a social process and so school is intimately related to the society that it serves. Children are socially active human beings who want to explore their environment and gain control over it. Education is a social environment established by members of a group, especially the children are brought to participate in the society. 
The school is a special environment established by members of society for the purpose of simplifying, purifying, and integrating the social experience of the group so that it can be understood, examined, and used by its children. The sole purpose of education in this philosophy is to contribute to the personal and social growth of individuals. The fund of knowledge of the human race past ideas, discoveries, and inventions was to be used as the material for dealing with problems. This accumulated wisdom of cultural heritage has to be tested. If it served human purposes, it becomes part of the reconstructed experience. This philosophy also emphasizes that values are relative, but sharing, cooperation, and democracy are significant human values that should be encouraged by schools. In conclusion, Dewey does not disregard the accumulated wisdom of the past. These past ideas, discoveries, and inventions, our cultural heritage will be used as a material for dealing with problems and so will be tested. If they are of help, they become part of a reconstructed experience. If they are not totally accurate, they will still be a part of their constructed experience. This means that the ideal learner for Dewey is not just one who can learn by doing, such as conduct an experiment, but one who can connect accumulated wisdom of the past to the present. Our fourth philosophy is the philosophy that George Count has introduced. It is the philosophy of building a new social order. In this philosophy, education is not based on eternal truths, but is relative to a particular society living at a given time and place. He also concluded that there is a cultural lag between material progress and social institutions and ethical values. Instruction should also incorporate the content of socially useful nature of a problem-solving methodology. Students are encouraged to work on problems that have social significance. Teachers should also lead society rather than follow it. Teachers are the agents of change. He also said that schools should ought to provide an education that affords equal learning opportunities to all students. George Counts concluded that schools and teachers should be agents of change. Schools are considered instruments for social improvement rather than as agencies for preserving the status quo. Whatever change you work for should always be changed for the better, not just for the sake of change. Teachers are called to make decisions on controversial issues. Not to make decisions is to actually making a decision. So like Dewey, problem solving should be the dominant method for instruction. For our fifth philosophy, it is the Social Reconstructionism by Theodore Brameld. As the name of the philosophy implies, Social Reconstructionism is a philosophy that emphasizes the reformation of society. The Social Reconstructionism contend that humankind has moved from an agricultural and rural society to an urban and technological society. There is a serious lag to an urban and technological society. Humankind has yet reconstruct its values in order to catch up with the changes in the technological order and organized education has a major role to play in reducing the gap between the values of the culture and technology. So, the social reconstructionism asserts that schools should critically examine present culture and resolve inconsistencies, 
controversies and conflicts to build a new society, not just change society. It is do more than reform the social and educational status quo. It should seek to create a new society. Just like John Dewey and George Counts, social reconstructionists Brameld believe in an active problem solving as the method of teaching and learning. And social reconstructionists are convinced that education is not a privilege of the few, but the right. It is a right to be enjoyed by all. And lastly, education is a right that all citizens, regardless of race and social status, must enjoy. Our last philosophy is the critical pedagogy by Paulo Freire. Paulo Freire, a critical theorist like social reconstructionists, believed that systems must be changed to overcome oppression and improve human conditions. Education and literacy are the vehicle for social change. In his view, humans must learn to resist oppression are not become victims nor oppress others to do so requires dialogue and critical consciousness the development of awareness to overcome domination and oppression rather than teaching as banking in which the educator deposits information into students head prayer saw teaching and learning as a process of inquiry which the child must invent and reinvent the world. Teachers must not see themselves as the sole possessors of knowledge and their students as empty receptacles. He calls this pedagogical approach the banking method of education. In conclusion, all of these education philosophers point to the need of interacting with others and of creating a community of inquiry as Charles Sanders Pierce put it. The community of inquiry is a group of persons involved in inquiry, investigating more or less the same question or problem and developing through their exchanges a better understanding both of question as well as the probable solutions. So a community of inquiry will engage learners in active problem solving. Thank you everyone for watching our podcast this morning and I hope you learned about the different philosophies of education. Have a good day.